Okay, let's continue on. So now we have the probability for each color in the first row and the first column. Now, to continue we need to understand why we actually need these probabilities. So, the task, which I will find, asks us to use a naive Bayes classifier to reconstruct this image. Now, uh, where is... Whoa! So, here it is. Use a naive Bayes classifier to reconstruct the image. So we need to find probability for each color in each row, probability for color in each column. So right now we only have it for the first row and the first column, but that's alright, we can just loop through everything. Alright, uh, whoops. Okay, so the way a naive Bayes classifier works is, here is my example image. So I got some dots. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dots. So the probability of a green dot occurring is 2 in 9. And the probability of a red dot occurring is 7 in 9. So if I was to pick any random dot, there's a 7 in 9 chance it will be red, and a 2 in 9 chance it will be green. So that's my overall probability. It's like, that's what like we found for the very first part of the code. We found out the probability for each color in the whole image. Now say if I drew a circle here, whoa, wrong color, hold up, black, oh, whatever, doesn't matter, so say I drew a, circle, a square here, I'd have, uh, the new prob for the probability for just this section of the image would be 3 and uh, three 4 red and 1 in 4 green, so that's a different probability for a small section of the image, so for example, we'll say that's one pixel, the probability of the pixel being red is 3 and 4, and the probability of the pixel being green is 1 and 4. So by pro calculating a whole line, a whole row, and then a whole column, we can multiply those probabilities together and find an approximate uh, chance that there will be a, a red or green dot or whatever color pixel in that specific location. Then we multiply by the overall probability, and that gives us a very, or obviously a naive guess at what color will occur there. That's why it's called naive Bayes classifier. It's not very good, but that's generally how it works. So you find the row probability and the column probability, multiply it together, then multiply it by the overall probability. And whatever is the probability is highest for whichever color, that's the color we're going to use to reconstruct the image. So now we've got these two we need to write a third for loop, uh, I believe. So let me think about this for a moment. Uh, yeah, that's right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's finish this for the whole image first, and then we'll calculate the probability. So I'm going to go and create a third array first. I'm going to call it naive prob, just for later. It'll be the same size. Whoa, yep. No worries. So we've got rows, columns, and the naive probability is quite simple. So uh, first things first, this isn't actually a probability. This is just the amount of pixels that occur in each one. So if I run this again, we can see uh, chicken. Yup. So this just gives me, say, I go row prob. That's just a bunch of numbers. I want to know the probability. So all I need to do is divide by the total amount of pixels. And we already have a reference to that. It's called coals. Or rows, sorry. So 161 pixels. So I can divide it by that, and I'll know the probability between 0 and 1. Exactly like I did before with the overall probability. So at the end of this loop, I'm just going to go uh, row prob equals row prob divided by rows. And I'm going to do the same thing for the columns. Col prob equals col prob divided by cols. Now, let's try this to see if it worked. Uh, row prob. Yup, so everything's a percentage now. I've got 88% for the white. Uh, where's my image? Yup, so this is the first column. It's called row prob. As I said, I made a mistake, but I'm not changing it now. 88% um, is white. Makes sense. Then we got like 3% for like this little yellow bit here or whatever. So that looks like it worked pretty well. Um, now, I want to do this for the entire image right but so I can just write an extra for loop so 
what we have to do is... Actually, let's calculate the naive probability first. That's more useful. So, under all this, I'm going to go naive prob... I'll write a for loop for it. So, for n equals 1 amounts of colors. Because the amount of colors is 8, and both row probability, column probability, and naive probability have 8 indexes. And then I'll go uh, naive prob n equals... Uh, open bracket, color prob n times row prob n. And that'll multiply each probability together. So, let's do that. Funky chicken. And uh, naive prob. Yup, so that probably makes sense. Col prob, I'll print out both the other ones so we can see the values. So, in the first column, the chances of being a white, or for the first row, the chances of being a white is 100% right, because there's only white pixels. And for the first column, it's almost the same, except for there's a little bit of yellow and stuff. But when you multiply those together, because the first first row, everything is zero except for one color. So you end up returning just that one color, because by multiplying by zero into this matrix, everything goes away to be zero, except for the, f the white pixel, I guess. So look based on that, this pixel, there's a 100% chance it's going to be white, which makes sense, because the whole row is white, and almost all of the column is white as well. So, because the whole row is white, there's a 100% chance it's going to be white. And it looks like column probability, yeah, it's all good. So, that's pretty much how you calculate the naive probability. Row probability times column probability. And then you also want to multiply by the overall probability, which is 8 colors prob. N. So if I run that again... It doesn't want to run because I have an extra bracket, maybe. N. Run. There we go. Uh, what did I call it? Naive prob. Yeah. So this got significantly smaller. It was point, uh, 88 before, point 0.88, but now it's a lot less because 8 colors prob, the chance of being white is in the whole image is only 46%. So that's why this is almost halved from 0.88 to 0.40 which makes sense again. So, we need to just repeat this process for the entire image, which is pretty easy to do. I'm just going to indent it all. Uh, hold on. So indent it. Twice, actually. And now, because this is doing it for the first row, and the first column. So instead of doing that, I just want to do it for every row and every column. So I can just type uh, for, let's call it big C for columns, equals 1, Coles. It's going to go 32 times for each column, because there's 32 columns. And then I also want to do, for each column, I want to do every single row. So for the first column, I want to go all the way down the row. Second column, all the way down the row. And each row we know is rows, 161. So inside this loop, I'm going to nest another one and call it big R for rows, 1 to rows. So it's going to come in here, go column, column 1, row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, blah, 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 all the way down. Then get to the end of the loop and come back. Column 2, row 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way down until we get to the very end of the image. So we need two ends at the end of this to finish the loops. And now we need to put these new values into here. So instead of doing just the first column, I'll be doing the first, then second, then third, then fourth. So I'll just make that big C and come down here, make this the big R for row. So this C will refer to, it'll go down every single column, and this R will stay at the row. So that'll do the entire col uh, f entire row. So basically just adding these two loops will redo this process, not only for the first column and first row, but for every column and for every row. So if I run that, it'll, it should count every pixel. I'll just check that by going all pixels equals zero. And then at the very end of the very last loop, I'm going to, uh, sorry, the end of each loop, I'm going to go pixels, uh, all pix equals itself plus one. And I'm running out of time, so I'll just run this really quickly and see what happens. All pixels. Yup, it's 5,000, so I counted every single pixel. And next video, I will implement the naive base classifier and reconstruct the image.